let's talk about Abbotsford and how it's affected by globalization. So what exactly is globalization? It's defined as the increasing interconnectedness of different parts of the world through common processes of economic, environmental, political, and cultural change. What this means is that people started to physically move around, and by doing so, they brought their cultures with them, connecting them and blending them together with their languages, cultures, and other things. I'm sure you've heard the story of Christopher Columbus and his little boat and how he colonized the Americas. Well, he went everywhere. Europeans colonized Australia, Africa, and South America. And when they got there, they influenced the culture of the people who already lived there. We won't dive too far into how or why this happened, but basically colonizers said, no, 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 this is wrong, to a lot of native cultural practices and systems. After European settlers spread all over the place, other people started moving around too. We now call this immigration. Immigration, the action of coming to live permanently in a foreign country, is a prominent example of globalization seen all over the planet because it represents the physical movement from one place to another. Globalization is a way of describing how countries are connected, and I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better way to visualize countries connecting than by our people moving around and blending under the same metaphorical roof. But we're not talking about the planet today, we're talking about Abbotsford. Well, immigrants currently account for roughly 27.6% of the population in Abbotsford, according to the most recent census of 2016. Oh, a census, by the way, is a city's way of keeping track of their population numbers. It helps cities like Abbotsford keep tabs on numbers of ages, immigrants, births, deaths, and other really important data regarding population. But let's get back to immigration. For example, my Oma and late Opa. They fled during the communist reign to Russia in Canada with their 12 children in 1974. So, during World War II, my great omas and opas were shipped away to work in work camps in Siberia, a region in Russia. And then later on, they moved to Western Russia after the war. And then during the Cold War, they came over here to Abbotsford. Now, in Abbotsford, we can see diversity all over the city. These immigrants want to feel at home in this very new, very different country. So they open businesses and they occupy places like temples and churches. We can see Sikh temples like the one on South Fraser Way and other sites. Even Christian churches sometimes offer services in Punjabi or other languages like the one on Huntington Road. My Oma is Mennonite, a more traditional branch of Christianity. She goes to King Road Church on, you guessed it, King Road. She has a few friends there from Russia and Germany, and it's very helpful for her, especially after her husband passed, to have friends from her homeland who help her feel at home. She also has her 12 children and dozens of grandchildren, many of whom speak German with her, and enjoy her cooking of traditional German and Russian dishes, myself included. We can see other businesses and places that represent all sorts of different cultures. Do you enjoy ethnic food? Indian? Mexican? Japanese? How about Chinese? These restaurants are all here because of globalization. Either someone moved here and introduced us to this food, or we went there and we found it. Either way, we went, we love this and we want more of it. So now we can see ethnic restaurants all over Abbotsford. You can get Vietnamese food at Villa Palace, Indian food at Gian's, Japanese food at Kojan Sushi, Mexican at Mucho Burrito, Chinese at Dragon Fort, and many more. Food connects people, friends, families, even strangers probably the most defining part about culture. It brings people together, and ethnic cuisine has definitely become a Western favorite. Think about the best memories you have with your family. Did it involve food? Thanksgiving memory? How about Christmas? People use food to celebrate everything. You definitely won't hear me complaining. Food is a huge part of culture, and by having so many different foods available here in Abbotsford, we're giving our immigrants places to remind them of home, and they're sharing our, their culture with others. Grocery stores even have ethnic food sections too. That's where my Oma gets my favorite tea that used to only be available in Germany. Globalization can be negative too. Canada's official languages are French and English, but our citizens speak many other languages. Luckily, more schools are starting to offer languages like Punjabi, German, and Japanese, but it's very difficult to have to learn English just to get by in Abbotsford. It's not the only negative effect of immigration. Back when Europeans 
first colonized Canada, indigenous groups were overlooked and often disrespected. In fact, their children were placed into schools to teach them how to be more European. These groups have now lost a huge part of their culture, including their numbers and their land. Many native Canadians live on reserves, the only place they feel they can truly be themselves. Canada has tried to make amends for what they've done, but nothing can take back the repression placed upon Aboriginals. Abbotsford is now surrounded by many cultural landmarks and celebrations of our unique cultures. UFV and other important organizations recognize Aboriginal land and their rights. Native Canadian history is now taught in schools. It's important that Canada takes accountability for our actions in the past. I remember being taken to many Native landmarks to learn about the true Canadian culture. We also have lots of crafts fairs, museums, and celebrations for many different cultures. There's the Mennonite Historical Society Museum and annual celebrations of holidays such as Ramadan, Diwali, and acknowledgments of First, Na First Nations land in many Canadian events or organizations. Today, we can even see immigration in politics, which wasn't always the case. Immigrants aren't even just immigrants anymore. Most of them are proud Canadians. Immigrants have a huge influence on the economy and the diversity of Abbotsford by opening up businesses of their own and supporting other businesses. In fact, they help the economy so much that a new Conference Board of Canada report predicts that eliminating immigration would have a huge negative impact on the Canadian economy by 2040. I see globalization and immigration as one and the same, or immigration is the prime example of globalization, or immigration perfectly represents globalization. Either way, you can't have one without the other. Every country is unique. Every culture is unique. Amosford has worked very hard to make sure that immigrants feel welcome and respected. I, for one, am very proud to drive through my hometown to see all of the different cultures and people present on every corner. Abbotsford wouldn't be what it is today without the influences of other countries through immigration. And we as a whole of different cultures and ethnicities, we are Abbotsford, British Columbia. Thank you for watching.